Let's talk about DLL analysis. How do we how do we deal with DLL? Can't just run it, all right? That'd be crazy. Oh. Or can we? Oh, I jumped right to the example. Uh, so there's there's different kinds of of DLLs. I mean, a DLL is a PE file. Windows PE file that the header, the e header, has a bit set that says I'm a DLL. So that's basically the difference. Um, now, how that DLL is going to be used uh, allows it to to have other features that can be um, utilized, such as exports, um, where it's actually exporting functions that can be called by other programs if the program loads the DLL. There's also something called a, um, is there to talk about here? There's also something called a uh, service DLL where it will get loaded and just like any Windows services, you can either have a, a EXE or you can have it as a DLL and it'll get loaded into a uh, service host process. And there's certain exports that if you follow the, the spec for service DLLs, if you have uh, exports by certain names, they'll get called. Um, when it comes down to the DLL main, which is the DLL equivalent of win main, um, that is like, like your win main or like your main function that expects the, um, the RC for you know number of arguments and RV for the array of, of arguments. DLL main actually expects uh, three different arguments. The main one being this forward reason, FD, FDW reason, sorry, FDW reason, which you could Google on that, but we include it in here. Um, the reason why DLL main is being called, and it's going to be one of these, will be one of these values. But these are these are the meanings: DLL process detach attach thread attach detach. What this means is DLL main is actually called multiple times for each process. It's called when the process attached, meaning it gets loaded into a process, when it gets unloaded from a process, when a new thread starts up in the process, or exits in the process, DLL main will get called for each of those. And that FDW reason will say why it's getting called. And so the DLL can do different things based on that. So, so when you do a load library, mm -hmm. it, it will call DLL main yep. after it's loaded with process attach? Yep. And, the, it, and then, so what would thread attach get from when you start a new thread? When you start a new thread, yeah. Query thread. Mm -hmm. So if a if a DLL is you know thread aware, then it, it might have certain um, global variables that it uses for synchronization or or what have you. Um, talk about exports. Um, CF Epic Four will show you the exports as well as in uh, Edpro. There's they got the exports. Window like they have the imports window. Um, here's something that's fun. So, all debug, immunity debug actually comes with a, a built-in application that uh, allows you to load a DLL. Um, but another way of doing it is actually to go into the open up the DLL in CFF Explorer, go to the headers. Go to the bit that says I'm a DLL and unset that bit and then save it to disk. 
and now it will you will be like a um, executable where if you load it up in all debug, it'll load it like it's a it's a non DLL and it'll bring you to that that DLL name because it looks just like WinMain, except it's going to extract those other arguments to it. Yeah, just remember that it extracts those three arguments. So I'm going to show you a example of that um, using the yeah using the B server. But we're just going to jump to the. Uh, I've already. Uh, feel free to, to take a look at the how to get the DLL out of it because it uh, drops the DLL. But I've already done that ahead of time. Um, it's going to be the B B something DLL. B B E R D K DLL. So I'm going to show you how we get. Take a look at that. There it is. Okay, so there clouds E R Z K dot D O And if I load that up in the ID first, because I always do that, it says it's hey, it's hacked. Except to analyze or nothing. Uh, CFF Explorer. Let's see, sections. Imports. It's got a, several DLLs, but only like one or, or a couple from each. And load library. Get proc address. Uh, let's see. The optional header, I think it is. Yep. DLL characteristic. No, not that. The file header? Uh, yep, it's the file header. Here, it's got characteristics for the file. If I click on that, file is a DLL. Unchecked. And if I save that off, Rick, not DLL .ex underscore. And that is now not a DLL. Or at least in terms of loading it into memory, it won't be treated like a DLL. So we go to Ida and take a look at that. We're going to see the the public start. It, it treats it just as as it does the DLL file because they're both it's PE file format. It's just one has a check or one has that bit set, one doesn't. And we see the the beginning of the uh, the unpacker here. There you push it. So if we go into just ignore. Sorry for that. Hmm? This, this one just ignores the, the three inputs. They're unpacking. Does it? Okay, so let me. Wait the five seconds. <laughs> so. Oh, wait a minute. So what's this? Oh, but this is DLL main. This isn't win main. Remember? We are just talking how DLL main takes these three arguments. That's right. So you have to set the whatever the uh, go down a little bit to the core phrase. There you go. Yeah. So you got to set it one of those. Oh, yep. so it doesn't do anything on thread uh, creation. Looks like it's just comparing it with with one there. If we take a look at this in Ollie, load it up. Um, let me start this up first. Holly. Okay. Here we go. Start. Um, 
any deployment name module is fine for this one. And we load that in. Ah, it looks like it's compressed or packed. Yep, thank you, Ollie. See this compare. Um, we basically have to get around this compare uh, that it, it wants it to be one. So what I'm going to do, easiest way for me, <laughs> do the compare and then go over the flag and <laughs> double click it. Set the flag. And now we could execute that. Um, we have the push AD. So what I would do here is um, execute it past the push AD and then do the whole setting over here, like we do the hardware breakpoint. Um, and, and then I could unpack the DLL that way. Which is what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, this is. Matt may have typed this one up. He likes immunity debug. And that's basically what I just said. What is immunity debug for if that Ollie doesn't? What is what? What is immunity do for if that Ollie doesn't? Um, immunity has the Python scripting okay. aspect of it. Um, which which Matt really likes, and which I'm sure if I did more unpacking stuff, I would like to for automation purposes. So. Okay. Yeah. The um, oh yeah, like I said, the Ollie dump plugin. I've seen um, attempted ports of that for immunity, but nothing that I'm comfortable with the stability of. So I, I like just with all all the debug I can use that all the dump plugin easily. Hmm. Um, so that's right. I'll show you that. So I am gonna go ahead and do that. We just did the push. And going to Set on one two FFAC, which sounds really familiar. Two FFAC. Let me break hardware on access, and we're going to make sure make sure that I'm following that right. Was the tail jump easier than that? Copy. It's going out. Oh, hey. Okay. This might be easier than I thought. No, not that one. Copy. Hey. Yep. So don't even have to do that hardware on access. Uh, 7, 9, 8, 0. So if I go to seven one zero zero seven nine eight zero, uh, I'm obviously missing a digit. One more zero. There we go. And I do breakpoint on execute there. And I run. And there we go. Hardware breakpoint one. EAP policy next instruction. And that was, oh, so that was actually that hit our on uh, memory access breakpoint. Because, yep, right before it was the pop AD. And now we jump and we're there. And I'll dump this out. To uh, what's this? Verzik on tax.ex.
if I load that into Ida. So do a bunch of analysis, identifies a bunch of libraries, and here we go, puts me in PLL main. So one of the things that we wanted to show with the unpacked version of this one that you'll get when the make sure I say this right the incremental option is given to Visual Studio Linker you're going to get um, they're called thunks that keeps going and actually Ida thinks all this is part of the same function even though we see this prolog here and it's not not really it's a new function so one way of dealing with this is we can automate the the um, defining of these as functions using a script, and that's what what this is here. Where it's actually going through and for this specific one, these are hard coded for this specific um, file. These memory addresses it goes through and basically makes functions for us. And that's just one way to to ease your analysis, make it go quicker. What we would do is we would um, undefine this function, uh, or not undefined, but delete the function. And then we can go up here, and we can either go through one by one, all the way up. And there's a lot of them, and that's why it's good to script. We can go through here one by one and go to that, to create a function. And then that way it's just um, a little easier to, to analyze. You can do the graph view and whatnot. And do that for each one. Or you can script it. So just be aware of the, the How did you scripting. Do that manually? What? How did you do that with the, with the new line? So I went to that location and I'm, I'm where my, my prolog is. I jumped P. P, the P key is the shortcut key to create function. Or I can go in here and say create function. And so what Ida does is it goes, okay, at the address that you're at, I'm going to, to um, start analyzing this to identify function boundaries. And so it'll look for returns. It'll actually um, follow jumps, although this one wasn't a good example. It will, come on, give me some jumps. No, there aren't any. Yeah, hey, there's a, it'll actually follow these these jumps to try to identify um, other chunks of, of the function to try to keep it together. Is this another thing that the pro version would do for you automatically? Chunk up. Um, it so something that this has that Ida has done is it actually identifies these functions as funks, but the what at least the free version of Ida had trouble doing was um, it identified a whole bunch of functions as actually like as one. So you get a funky um, graph view when you do that. You could still get the the analysis in the free uh, the analysis in the A4 version is more sophisticated, but I have run into instances where it will still accidentally call a bunch of, of stuff. Uh, uh, one thing, actually, let me show you what that looks like in graphical mode, because it's really easy to, to identify in graphical mode. Um, and then be aware of, of the whole undefining of, of functions and manually creating. So it's going through, blah, blah, blah. It's going to bring <laughs> it. And if I jump to that, I now have hey, here, but where did that come from? And oh, hey, here's another one, but where did that come from? And where, where are these coming from? It's, it's funky, it's a mess. Because it's taking multiple functions and it's um, basically treating them like it's, it's one and trying to display all the different blocks graphically. That's what I have to say about DLLs for now.